Hello and welcome to the Comedy Slab. This is episode 110. Yeah, <laughs> count them. What was that? <laughs> that was me dropping off. I'm so tired. It's like we've recorded them all back to back. We should have we should have spaced them out and done them every week. Yeah, yeah that would have been the sensible way. But then mm. we wanted to release them in one mass because, you know, we're in an age of binge listening and viewing, aren't we? So, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. actually, there was, there was, was it in New York, a disc jockey who, maybe for charity, mate, it's a long time ago, uh, 1960s, 1950s, did you hear about this? Uh, a marathon broadcast over 24 hours, maybe over, yeah, it's more than 24 hours. Just him on his own. These days, they would have a shift system and all of that and duty of care and medics on hand. He absolutely went gaga on air. I mean, I've done that. For a, yeah, he ended up running out. <laughs> not want running, out running out of the shop where it was set up. I don't think it was a studio set up for some reason. He just ran off and I don't know that he was ever seen again. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. No, that's it's that's just so ridiculous. He was running on the hard shoulder of the I-5. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Give me an I-5, they said. Can we can we check that out and just see if he's all right? Well, I doubt he'd still be alive even if he had been all right after that. Don't you think there is an element that all this, like, kind of, you know, you say due to your care and they'd have to do it in shifts and they couldn't do that and make sure there's nothing sharp near you and all that. <laughs> it does kind of ruin it a bit, doesn't it, really? Don't you think? It, I mean, I know, I know people go... Oh, it's him doing the... Oh, it's health and safety gone mad. But it is a bit, isn't it, really? You kind of well, think, oh, well, that's that's the no, jeopardy has gone from it, hasn't it? Although it's just like but, a lot of people just turning up to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't say it quite the same if it was you that the jeopardy was all around. Well, I, no, I wouldn't do it. I mean, I've never been a, 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 a city in a bath of baked beans kind of <laughs> kind of presenter but you know well you were I, boasting I, about having a bath early this evening ah oh, yes but i mean i used i used traditional water i'm not I'm not, <laughs> really? oh, <we're> not beans <laughs> oh. I, I must admit i i put a drop of brown sauce in there well that's my story and i'm sticking to it <laughs> oh dear oh dear oh, oh dear but yeah, hmm. you just kind of think otherwise. It's just it isn't anything, is it? Really, if you if you if you, if you, if you, if you go right, okay, I'm I'm going to do a, a 24 hour marathon radio show. They go, all right then, okay, but we'll have to get 23 other presenters. <laughs> and you go, so I'm only doing do it for an hour then. <laughs> it's not well, it's not anything, is it? No, but I have been involved in those. Maybe I've done two or three hours. Um, but then uh, I've just had a flashback, a very painful one. Of Channel 5 had a show when I was an announcer on Channel 5. And they had a show called Touch the Car. Which, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that? what I was thinking of. Because they're well, massive the, in America, the aren't they? Was yeah. it an SUV? Because the last person standing, literally, and touching this vehicle wins it, don't they? That's but right. But, I mean, I didn't see the, the offending episode, but... Uh, uh, it was the one time I've been involved in an intermedia relationship and the the woman behind the glass I was having a relationship with. <laughs> you've, been, you've been having a way with somebody at work, is that what you were saying? <laughs> well, inter- if you must media. put it so crudely. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were having sex with a pile of cassettes or something. Oh. <laughs> intermedia relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Your mind is highly dubious. Anyway, this is 20 years ago in my defence. Um, but she saw it. I don't know why I involved her, except to say she saw the offending episode. You're just where the, bragging. <laughs> this guy, stop it. That purple is particularly strong tonight, your it's drink. It's potent, it, yeah. Obviously. Um, <laughs> let's leave the idea of potency to one side, shall we? But this guy was the last man standing, and he was actually, you could see him hallucinating while he's oh, touched this flipping car. Nothing, not the best car in the world is worth, in my view, going nuts over. And uh, he was talking to himself, which, of course, we as broadcasters are used to doing. We, yeah. we don't bat an eyelid. This guy was just saying... <laughs> <laughs> I think he might have been talking about touching the car. <laughs> At least I think that's what he said. Oh, um, man. Anyway, haven't you got some hot news, hot topic from the world of comedy? 
Oh, reasonably hot. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I, it, oh, come it, on. Sell it, it a bit harder, mate. But no, I only say that because it leads on from something I was on. Do you remember I told you a couple of weeks ago that Lee Mack was going to be hosting something about woodwork, carpentry? <laughs> Do you remember that? Yes. And then, um, oh, what was the melon, melon Sue? Melon What's the, melon, what's the oh, no. melon one called? Mel... Mel, G- Gildroy, Sue? Gildroy? Sue Perkins. Sue, Sue Perkins. Perkins. Sue Perkins was going to do. What was she going to do? Was it? Um, <laughs> you can't interview it, yourself all throughout the show. <laughs> was it a cake <laughs> one? Or anyway, the latest one is is Catherine Ryan is going to host a jewellery crafting show. <laughs> Which, when I told you earlier, you just go for that. I don't know if you're a jewellery crafter listening to this podcast. We're so sorry. I mean, no, there won't be any jewellery crafting in there. But well, we're not laughing at jewellery crafting. We're laughing. To, to me, it's it's the Foxtrot Restaurant and Alan Partridge. And monkey tennis, isn't it? If you're not careful. It is a bit. In a city I mean, scene, it is I, a bit, yeah. isn't it? Take the fattest people from the inner cities, put them in but a pub car park. They're quite obviously searching for... And it's really weird because today, I told you, didn't I, I had, I had uh, Malcolm, our, uh, um, Malcolm, our heating engineer, came round to sort out... We've had problems. But, but I was sitting there and I'm thinking, nobody's ever done celebrity plumbing, have they? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, not in so many words. But uh, the pages of the news of the world used to be full of it. Like, I was... <laughs> not in that way. And I was watching him, and he was like... Because he was, he was like, you know, soldering all these, these joints together and mm. not, not joints together. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've now got the hot water... as well. We've now got the hot water tank fastened to the chimney because we couldn't get him off the well, roof. Well, you did say he did some funny things to your cat. Oh, no, it was a yeah. Cat 5 cable. <laughs> he, he made it join to itself. He did. He did. Which He's is what I tell that. a lot of people to do when they annoy me. <laughs> Go but, and I was watch- connect to yourself somehow. L- looking at his skill base, and I'm kind of thinking that 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 would work when it's celebrity plumbing. I think. I think you know. I, c- I can't see be- why it wouldn't. Although you could imagine uh, a heavy uh, dose of insurance required if a soldering iron was uh, implicated. Well, he, he, used a, he used like a blow lamp. He was like, he was using a blow lamp to do it all and everything. But I th- even thought of a name. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a celebrity plumber. I'll have to go and get the parts and I can come back Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was going to be, I'm a celebrity plumber. Oh, who done this then? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm a celebrity plumber. I'd like to help you, but my brother-in-law's got me ladders at the moment, so I can't help you. <laughs> anyway, have another toke. Yeah. <laughs> it can't be worse than Catherine Ryan jewellery crafting show, can it, really? Um, Look, we shouldn't it's, prejudge. In it's called, fairness. It's going to be called All That Glitters, and it Ooh. aims to find the UK's next up-and-coming jewellery star. Oh, yeah, because the UK's last up-and-coming jewellery <laughs> star was... Was, was, as we all know, was, um, um, <laughs> um, <not a> tip, <laughs> yeah, but you say that. But if we had been joking a few years ago, but apparently there's going to be some show about cooking cakes, for goodness sakes. But well, I still can't comes get up, that one. Well, I can't, but it is fabulously popular. So it doesn't matter what you or I think about it, does it? You um, and your soggy bottom. Well, it does. It does matter. I mean, it matters in as much as it matters. As Forrest Gump once said. Uh, oh, no, it wasn't Forrest Gump, actually. It was uh, Sean Penn. Uh, <laughs> Very similar. In a film called, oh, that film escapes me, but he went, it matters to me. And I thought, oh. yes, that's a good point. He didn't say it doesn't matter. It matters to me. I Am Sam was the film. Uh, and it's brilliant. If you ever get the chance to watch Sean Penn in I Am Sam, don't pass it up. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, yeah, that's, that's all the news I've got. That's all we want, frankly. Better better than the news you'd got, wasn't it, really? So, Oh, get you. (laughs) I'll keep me plumbing celebrity shows to myself next time. I'll tell you where to stick your pipes. Uh, Right. (laughs) We are I suppose we ought to get on with the show. Um, We are Actually, I thought of a better name for it. What? Flux Off. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, don't call us, love. We'll call you. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted. Do continue. <laughs> uh, well, Flux and Law, didn't, they were the spitting image uh, creators of those Fluck, puppets. Flux and Law, weren't they? Oh, yeah. it was close. If it, if, you know, if it was a family business, it would be Flux and Law. Yeah. 
Yeah. Anyway, um, sorry. Yes. I interrupted. You should be sorry. Um, I'm just reminding myself what the show is called. It's Tom Rigglesworth's Open Letters. And that's not the sound of him just opening letters. It's him notionally writing an open letter. <laughs> Thank you. I've, that's uh, That would be Tom Rigglesworth's Tom Rigglesworth opens letters, isn't it? That's a different. <laughs> that's the S and the apostrophe. Well, that's the idea I submitted to him. I have to date. I haven't heard back. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to combine it with plumbing and uh, cake baking, but you know, if they won't reply to your first email, well, where can you go? Uh, I'm sure he'd tell me where to go. Anyway, we are talking not about a TV show, not about a podcast, but about a BBC Radio 4 show. And uh, it ran to a pilot and two series. Tom Rigglesworth, I mean, is he on the map for you? Was he on the map before I put this on the slab to, to um, prod? Yeah, I think we... Didn't we have a conversation about... Uh, there was open letters and there was... What was the other series that, that he did that I think we'd both oh, hang been ups. aware of? It? Hang, hang ups. ups, yeah, which was... Where which was about, his, well, fictional family. Fictional yeah. family, yeah. Great cast in that as well. So, so yeah, I kind of... And I think it was years ago when I used to be driving around at 6.30 in the evening and used to listen to the 6.30 comedy slot was when I first became aware of him. I've not seen much of him elsewhere as in TV, but, you know, I'm not, as you know, as regular listeners know, I'm not a completist. And uh, I don't even, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a generalist, which means I know next to nothing about next to everything. So... You know, have you got any sense whether he's got a had had any TV shows? No, I mean, I looked up some of the stuff that he'd done, and mm. um, he he other than the appearances on radio panel shows like The Unbelievable Truth, and um, he had other stuff as well um, on the radio. I think he's been uh, your mate Arthur Smith, Arthur Smith Ball and <laughs> Bash. Yeah, um, he'd been He's involved been in that. that. Yeah, and, and like he'd done bits and pieces, and other than that, no. I mean, Hang Ups is now in series five, which I'd kind of missed all that. So that's last last year was the last time they they'd recorded those. My point is, Tom Rigglesworth, great, great. I think you know a great talent um, writes all of his own stuff, doesn't he? All of, all well, of the open letters and Hang Ups. Um, James Kettle, uh, he yeah, wrote with. Uh, do we know anything about James? And if we don't, I'm going to... Well, I looked him up, and again, he wasn't... I mean, he kind of does this, really, and that's that was more or less... You know, there was nothing really... Not, not a huge Well, career, he, might do, really. he might do... Well, the truth is, we've only looked him up in the context of comedy. He might have written loads of serious yeah. dramas, or... That's true. Might be a novelist. Anyway, keep is, talking. You've never had any problem doing that while I look him up. No. I won't. Okay. Um, I have to say as well, if for anybody who's not familiar with Tom Rigglesworth, and I searched high and low on the internet um, to see if I could find any reference to this at all, because every time I see his picture, I think Frank Zappa. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's the tash and the um, wild it, hair. Got the beard and the, and the moustache and the, and the uh, yeah, and as you say, the wild hair. And I think nobody's referenced that at all. You think, what, not, you think even in his wiki page, it would say something like the... The Frank Zappa lookalike, Tom Rigglesworth. Nothing, not a sausage, but there you go. Anyway, did you look him up? Uh, yes, thank you for buying me time. He's a writer for BBC Radio 4's The News Quiz. Uh, comedy yeah. credits include, as we've already said, Mr Rigglesworth's uh, hang-ups. Uh, actually, we didn't say that. We said this one is co-written. So, yeah. Um, and can't tell Nathan Caton nothing. I, I kind of know that show. Can't. Pluck it out of my memory immediately, the detail. Um, words are holics, love it, and it's not what you know. Uh, represented by Casarotto, Ramsey and Associates. So he is a fully fledged, he's a TV writer as well as um, doing this stuff for radio. So He it, it seems like he, he's very comfortable being, which not everybody is, being a kind of job in gag writer as well, doesn't he? You know, he, he, mm. he seems to write, he can, he can just dip in and, you know, write us a gag, and Mr. Kettle, and uh, <laughs> oh, there's one ready. Look at that. <laughs> Have a cup of tea. 
Have a good tea, yeah. But so you know, very very talented. If you if you're able to do that, I think very yeah. very impressive. Anyway, yeah. um, should we have a clip? Oh, well, I think it's high time. I forgot we even did that these days. Um, <laughs> yes, so we've got two uh, two clips from this uh, radio show. So there are four open letters in uh, this series, and this one is about estate agents. So he's mouthing off about that particular profession, if indeed he would call it that. And uh, this is a BBC Radio 4 production, as you've gathered. And in this clip, um, he's just uh, getting some steam uh, out of his ears uh, about uh, a friend of his who's uh, letting out his flat. It's it's that over-familiarity that gets me. My friend owns a flat, which he rents out through a letting agent. They get 8% commission on all the rent. And when they ring him, they call him mate. Mate, this man is working for my friend and he calls them mate. Meanwhile, I owe the bank over £100,000 and they call me sir. (laughs) Every other part of buying a house is dealt with by someone who has actually studied and taken exams. Someone who can offer a unique skill. From solicitors who are clued upon conveyancing, surveyors who can hold a clipboard and count, to... (laughs) Mortgage brokers who have studied for years the complex art of how to make a computer say yes rather than no. And yet all these real industries are held together by a profession which requires no qualifications whatsoever. A profession which requires nothing more than a sharp suit and an ability to be so economical with the truth that even Geoffrey Archer would declare you a little bit shifty. Now, if I wanted to be really really critical what do you mean if <laughs> you yeah, always want to be good point um do you know the and I, what can you do because it's the topic of the show mm. but but the the jokes about estate agents it wouldn't be and this is only what this is is this about six eight years old is it something like that is this 2012 uh, or something i think it was something like that i will double check and you kind of think even then, wouldn't it have been a bit dated to do to do gags about a stage? Yeah, 20, 2010 to 2012, the series was. Right. Um, wouldn't it have been a bit dated to do ga- – that, that's that's the first thing that springs to mind. But, of course, you're a bit stuffed because that's what the whole episode is about, isn't it, really? Am I being unfair there or not? Well, I mean, he's not stuffed because he's chosen it. He's chosen it presumably no, because I he mean- feels passionate about it. I mean, I'm a bit stuffed if I don't if I don't like it. You know what I mean? I'm I'm a bit I'm a bit hamstrung, aren't I? Really? Because that's that's what the episode's about. So uh, yes. suck it up, suck it up, fat boy. Is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? But <laughs> I would have said suck it up, brummy boy. But you know, but, all right. Call yourself <laughs> what you like. Is it is it unfair? To th- is that not a, cri- a fair criticism at all? Or well, not? he almost he does actually acknowledge that earlier on, um, almost guiltily. One one might think. Yeah, I think it is a bit of a safe target, an obvious target. But there is some originality in there. I've never thought about um, the fact that, you know, um, he starts by talking about markets as they would have been understood right from the Middle Ages. You you take something, maybe on a barrow or towed by a horse or whatever, to market. You can't Mm. do that with bricks and mortar so you need um people interested in buying introduced to people interested in 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 selling his argument here is he says he's not really having a go at them and then he has half an hour of having a go at them Uh, (laughs) but hey artistic license mm, stretching the point but he's saying essentially it can all be done online well even in the pre-online age there were uh, select people who chose to sell their own houses. I've looked at it and heard about it, and it's like telling me to do my own uh, plumbing, back to your favourite topic, to install my own central heating. I would not in a million years do that, and if I did, it would take a million years, and it would still leak at the end of the million years, and I'd be going, oh, who done that then? Mm. With a fag hanging out of my mouth. No stereotype <laughs> there. But... Um, so I've always taken the view it's, yeah, it's another suck it up ball boy. Ball boy? Balls boy. Sorry, you, you were saying that you wouldn't, you wouldn't 
Buy or sell online? Is that what, you, is that what you're I'm saying? saying I'm saying I would, I would, I just couldn't be bothered with all the hassle. And I, I accept there's a certain amount of money. He's talking about the figure, 3,000 quid. Of course, uh, you know, that might be an average, always an average at the time. Yeah. Um, or that's probably a bit above average. I don't know. But the point is, um, oh, oh. It, it's, it, you, you accept that you're paying for something to be offloaded off your shoulders. Right. All I, all I can tell you is when we moved house about three years ago to this mm. current property, <clears throat> we, um, in fees, we saved, and this is using an online estate agency. Um, would would we it saved, be the same colour as your drink? Yes, and but in <laughs> With, a block-shaped form. Yeah, yes, indeed. I don't, know why, I don't know why we can say purple bricks. I mean, it doesn't oh. make any difference. Like, they're not paying us, um, um, but well, if they, they want to... Do. Yeah, we wouldn't refuse. We'll give you an address at the end of the podcast. <laughs> Um, I and from a a woman at a the the other estate agent like the people we were buying off their estate agent and she said oh who are you who are you with and I said oh we're with Purple Bricks and she went oh oh we shouldn't mention them and all this you know we had to laugh about it and she said seriously she said what what is the difference between them and us I said about seven grand and that was how much we saved by not going with a conventional That's considerable high street. wasn't it yeah it, it's an it was enough for me to go. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> laughing all the way to the bank. So I did. Oh, I haven't given a head. Look at the time, and I haven't even given oh, a headline well, yet. That, that's me not holding you to, to account, Prime Minister. And, and, I, and I have to say, it's a cracker. Uh, my it headline for this is uh, Tom Rigglesworth's waiting gold. With his waiting gold, Tom Rigglesworth's Worth's worth. worth. Rigglesworth's <laughs> his waiting You're gold. You're wriggling, aren't you? Should have written it down, shouldn't you I? You should have rehearsed it. Um, you get the idea with that. So you like it, we're to assume. You yeah, like I him. like it. There, there are a number of a number of little sticky sticky uh, situations that I have throughout. Like it, it, and again, and I know you'll go, oh, I can't believe it. Why you I don't like talk that? like that? You do talk like that all the while <laughs> well, when I you're don't. being very critical. I so don't. It's very London centric again, isn't oh. it? It's like I know he's I bought a house it's in the she- East End. It's Sheffield centric. He's it's a not- Sheffield lad, but he's on about London, Foxtons. You know, nobody knows who Foxtons are outside the M25. Love, I got to tell you, we haven't <laughs> um, got a clear. What you you're said on about. East End, yeah. Before before you get lots of correspondence, I'm too kind to you. Uh, South East London, the South South East End. No, he really um, he really lives in in the East End. Oh uh, right, well, what he talks about is the South East London. Oh yeah, I know. He- well, he's obviously he's just moved it just for for uh, you know just to. Uh, Appearances, so. I was rather hoping, and um, you may be given the lie to this, that this was uh, recorded uh, at uh, the BBC's Northern um, Powerhouse uh, in Salford, because that's where that's the other place. Uh, when they could stop it, you you read that in the brochure, didn't you? <laughs> the BBC's Northern Powerhouse. <laughs> it wasn't quotes if you'd heard them. What what translates as the place the BBC grudgingly moved to, where they were all told that they had to move out, and <laughs> nobody wanted to go. <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. Um, oh dear. No, some, go on. Some of my Carry best on. friends work in Salford. The, the, um, the Northern Powerhouse. <laughs> well, it was in. Inc- oh come on, you. <laughs> You could be ironic as well. Because we um, all sit up here with our flat caps and whippets and go, well, I'll tell you what, love, I'm not watching this if it were made in London. There's no <laughs> way I'm going to watch this. Unless they make it in Salford, I'm not watching it. It's rubbish. <laughs> rubbish. The old lot. Rubbish. <laughs> I'm taking the whippet out. Um, oh, so, go on, tell us. Uh, tell, tell us, we're what? all agog. No, you're We're not. all agog. You don't look remotely gog-like. Um, I would just say, uh, to, to an extent, it's breath of fresh air. Um, there aren't enough Sheffield comedians um, who live in East London, and um, ooh, but I can't get excited about it. Is the sad thing, and also, yeah, the, the, the fundamental flaw of this episode. Other episodes are available, and other views are available. Of course, go and make up your own mind, dear listener. But um, I would say it's just a soft target, and in my experience, I was waiting for all the problems with estate agents having heard the stereotype of state, estate agents as a younger yeah. man. And yeah. actually, they're all right people. Shock horror. You know, some are better than others. Well, that's true of consultant surgeons, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I know that's, that doesn't make for exciting comedy, but arguably 
this hasn't made exciting comedy. It's made interesting comedy in different ways of seeing it, but quite I, I gentle. Think the point that you make, though, is 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 very valid because I think it goes back to the root of what we've said so many times is that the premise needs to have a degree of believability, a degree of relatability. Mm. And if and if he's saying, oh, you know what, estate agents are like, they're all white boys and they're all that, and you think, no, they're not. <laughs> and, and that mm. kind of then pulls it apart at the seams, doesn't it, in a way? And, and, and I was sad for that. But... Again, I, I kind of give him a pass on it because you have to contextually you have to say right. Well, he's he's written eight episodes, and so you know he's done this and another seven co-written. You're determined to write out James Kettle, well, aren't you? you? No, I, no, I'm no, putting no. the kettle back on. The the kettlemaster <laughs> is always up there for me, but no, I, I do you know what I mean? It's it's that kind of. Um, well, you've got to do it about something. And this could have been the weakest of the two series, couldn't it? The two series of Yeah, we of might four. have been unlucky. We don't know. Yeah. and But I have to say, in terms of the, the like I said, the gag writing, the writing itself and the de- the delivery, the only thing I would have liked to... I, time hangs a bit heavy when it's when it's it's a monologue, which essentially this is what it is. It's a one-hander, isn't it, really? Uh, except there's... Uh, do we actually believe that is his 94-year-old... Grandmother, she gets oh, a... God, I love her. She is just... She, I mean, that is just... She should just, have done more. <laughs> it was just awesome, wasn't it? It was just so... Like, the kind of gentle, understated, and and really very funny um, grandma. She kind of reads out the letter that she sent to this estate agent, which kind of gets it all, the, the whole ball rolling. I mean, I laughed out loud when she said about... Was it her husband said... Um, he'd answer correctly in the multiple choice, what was a fat, hairy wasp? And he'd answered C, A, B. <laughs> she could obviously just... tell a gag. Uh, she might not have written that one, but she told it well. Brilliant stuff. Really, really loved it. But, yeah, I mean, I, 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 and again, I've, you kind of think, oh, could you have done, you know, translated some of it into more sketchy kind of stuff? Would Would that have helped you, do you think? Well, we've we've argued the reverse on numerous slabs, haven't we? So we've got to be careful in case we want people to go back to the archive. But I'm thinking of um, Alex Da Da Da, a man, Jewish. Uh, oh Lord yeah, comedy. yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Well, that was a bit more straight, wasn't it? The the inserts, as we call them in the trade, were more straight um, yeah. and fa- fact based, which didn't make for exciting listening. I um, was thinking of going right back to. As far as Sarah Kendall, oh, she um, hasn't had a even, for a few weeks. Or even uh, what was the cock lady called? The Russian. <laughs> <laughs> That's my girlfriend. You're talking about. <laughs> she might be listening to this. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> moving on swiftly, <laughs> I think it's pronounced cock. Try to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas, Peter. That's the one. <laughs> Didn't she run for South Africa? Oh, that was another Olga. Oh, dear, yeah, oh dear. Yeah, so that was a that. vulgar Olga you've just done. Yeah. <laughs> Should we have another clip so we can recover? Uh, uh, if Yeah, if we can recover in that time. <laughs> Oh, you, did you honestly say that without realising it could have other meanings? I could hear it resonate around my head after I'd said it. Anyway, um, this one fast forwards to later in the show, to half hour show, and um, we find uh, him taking ownership or getting to the point of uh, showing interest, rather. Uh, I, I've, I've just issued a spoiler unintentionally. But. Um, you know, it's a good resolution because we want to we want to see him actually experience uh, estate agents firsthand and hopefully stand up his theory uh, that estate agents are you know suboptimal, shall we say, being kind. So this is about them um, falling in love with a property and uh, seeing its then current owner. I could tell immediately from the two purple streaks in her hair and the gap tooth smile that she was the owner of our flat. Well. <laughs> Her flat. We're hoping to buy your house, I said. We, we were just admiring it. 
Oh, she said, are you the ones who have put an offer in? Yeah, I said, sorry it's taken so long with the mortgage. Uh, we're trying as hard as we can. Please bear with us for a few more days. And, and please, don't sell it to that builder. Oh, of course, that's fine, she said. I've not had any other offers. <laughs> I'm not in any great rush. But the estate agent, I said, the estate agent told me you were furious and, and there was another offer on the table. No, they're not at all, she said. I, I haven't spoken to them since last week. It's all ticking over nicely as far as I'm concerned. This was unbelievable. The more I chatted with the owner, Helen she was called, the more I heard about the history of the place. She invited us in and gave us a proper tour. Rather than suggesting we rip everything out and modernise, like Dan did, she told me about the radiators and exposed pipework and one of her favourite things, the window blinds that receded into the window cell. <laughs> Interesting audience reaction throughout all of this as well. I, I, I kind of... He started out, I think he sounded quite nervous um, and a bit ponderous, I thought, and the, and the pace picked up as he went through. Um, I don't know who edited it, but you could hear a lot of the edits. And, I, and again, I, I do wonder whether it's because, um, A, we've edited between us an awful lot of audio in our time and can hear the edits. Or a lot of B. awful audio. Oh, yes, or an awful lot of audio and awful, a lot of audio. Yeah, I don't know which one it is. Um, or, or because I listen on headphones that, that I pick it up. And I, and I was thinking, oh, that was a, that was a bad one there. Um, but it was about this point that I'm starting to think, who does he remind me of? Mm -hmm. And the, I think the one that came to mind, so much so that I immediately went onto YouTube just to have a listen to see how it stacks up. And he, I think it is quite close. Um, do you know James Veach? Have you come across him at all? I know the name. He's the guy that I think he did a TED talk, um, and he's done other stand-up as well, where he replies to scam emails. Oh, uh, well, writes to Nigerian princes or supposed ones. Yeah, yeah. Th th that was converted into a radio series with the wonderful and sadly departed Felix Dexter. Oh, was it? Yeah. Was that James Veach's contractual obligation? No. Unless we're talking about two different projects. Are you saying... Oh, I, yeah, I might be, it might be uh, two angles on, on a similar thing. Anyway, um, no, I've heard that at other times, but um, I found it interesting. Yeah, I have heard it. it and I, I don't know that there was that. And I always thought, also thought there was a bit of, bit of Jasper Carrot in there as well. You know, the way he got animated and... and, and the more excited he got, the the, the delivery, he kind of got sort of very exasperated. Carrot used to do that a lot. He'd, he'd, yeah. he'd you know, get very exasperated in his in his delivery, telling a story. There is no denying, though. I mean, from from my point of view, and as I say, you, the jury's out for you. But I think, would you agree, he's a great storyteller? I think so. And I, look, he's 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 another part of the richness of the scene. So I wouldn't want him not to be around. Um. I'd like to see more of him, and I'd like to see him um, do some TV or more TV if I've missed out on his um, TV to date. And the fascinating thing, I don't know if you read this, did you see that he'd, um, the whole thing had come about? He'd been, his Edinburgh show came about because he'd been on a train. Oh, uh, yes, a witness a virgin train manager abuse his position, was what I read. Yeah, well, basically, it was, this woman um, hadn't got, the right ticket or enough for a ticket or something like that. And the Virgin train manager was going to put her off at the next station. Mm. And he um, spoke to all his fellow passengers and they had a whip round to pay what she owed. Oh. And the, instead of saying, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, the train manager called the police at the terminus station to have him arrested, have him and her arrested for, I think for ticket fraud, fraud or something like that. Anyways, he just all kind of got out of hand. Oh, and he, and he, and he kind of, he wrote this, he wrote the show. I think that was his Edinburgh show was based on this real thing that had happened to him, which is, which is, and, and then, then obviously he's kind of expanded all that. And then, you know, fictionally written other stuff off the back of it, but mm. it works great for me. I, I must admit, I'm, I, I, I like stories like that and uh, as to how things come about. And comedians are uh, particularly good at spotting a good yarn like that, aren't they? Yeah. And the yeah. potential for, for spin-offs. Um, that's interesting. Um, but, yeah, I'm saddened that you're not 
I thought you would have been a bigger fan of this. I think I might enjoy Hang Ups more. I've certainly heard Hang Ups. I've only heard it when I've been in the car or incidentally when I've turned it on, being very old school and still listening to linear wireless. Hark at me. Maybe this, as you say, isn't the strongest one uh, of the two series. Um, but there's, uh, there's certainly some good st- stuff going on. And my second listen was more enjoyable than the first. So who knows, that trajectory could have carried on with the third and fourth listening, hearing, hearing more stuff. Mad um, it that. It, should, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't work that way, should it, really? It you shouldn't, think about it. but it does. I Weird, don't know. If, with me, I, I wonder if it's me putting up barriers too quickly and making decisions too hastily. And then I need... To, you know, it's actually once you start finding yourself laughing, you think, ah, oh, right, I'm obviously warming to this, belatedly. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is why it must be tough on comedians to think that a lot of people only hear their stuff once, on the radio, for instance, um, because they, they know that they might make a stronger impact if people gave it more time. Yeah. And, anyway. And that, not only do they hear it once, but they hear it once and they make a decision based on that. And as to whether they hear anything else again. Well, exactly, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. But that's that's why I'm, I'm one of many reasons to enjoy the comedy slab, because we force each other to, to face our prejudices and face them down very often. So, um, yeah, no, I don't come away feeling short-changed. Uh, he's still an interesting guy. I'd like to hear more of James Kettle's material, and I'm sure I've heard it, not knowing I've heard it as well. Yeah, probably. Panel shows yeah. and so on, Yeah. <laughs> Um, All right. right, it is certainly, talking of time, it's high time we went into score mode. Do you want to go first? I'm still wobbling, Mrs. I, I feel like I always go first, but I will, I don't mind. No, I mean, you, I don't. you feel that, but you don't. If you went through the accounts, I, I think... I think I do. That's the problem. <laughs> no, you're the problem. <laughs> Sorry, I've been on an assertiveness course this week. <laughs> well, I think you should go on an anger management course next week. Well, I don't think I should. And if you <laughs> don't say that again, I'll punch <laughs> your face in. <laughs> Whoa. Um, I'm I'm teetering as well, actually. I'm teetering between a um, a three and a half and a four. Oh, that's generous for you. Yeah, I mean, I find it highly, highly listenable. I'm a big fan of this type of radio. If if you if you pardon the expression, but I think sure you know what I mean by that. The um, mm. but there are a number of. Not downsides, but there are a number of kind of detracting factors that we've you know we've mentioned um, that that kind of pull it down just a little bit. But I, but I mean, if if I was presented with it, I would go. Oh, I don't want to listen to that. You know, I I would um, willingly listen to it. Mm. Oh, three and a half or four. Um, I Make think. Up time. I think on the scheme of things, I'm going to give it a three and a half. <gasps> I'm going to give it three and a half. <sighs> but 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 four borders. Is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's the it's, it's the four, four end of it's the four end of three and a half. I mean, there's no question about it. <laughs> uh, you mean three point seven four seven six really seven curly. six? Okay, yeah, yeah. Fair dues. Gosh, can barely keep up. Um, well, what uh, what came into my mind as I was listening? I don't know if it was the first or second time. Should be the second time. Um, I, I for me it crystallised around a. Three, and th- and there were per- points during th- this discussion where I was even tempted to go down to two and a half, but actually I think that's unfair. <sighs> I know what a meanie, what a blue meanie. Um, so I'm going to go with three. So between us, that would be six and a half out of ten, which is respectable if not sparkling, which might Very. be might be telling. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, homework for next week then. Mm. Um, Make your mind I, up on that as well. Do you know? I, yeah, because I've got two again this week, but I'm, I've made a decision. I'm going to stick with it. But um, two, born out of the fact, and I think this is great news for people who love comedy. Born out of the fact that I wanted to do something that is current, that's that's you know kind of happened or just happening or um, available roundabout now. Because I know I do temp- tend to go back and and have a look in the in the archive. So I wanted to do something current. But I mean, there's so much great stuff about. Mm-hmm. Um, or there's, there's so much new stuff about it. We'll find mm-hmm. out whether it's great or not. Um, and I don't know if you caught, caught up with this thing. It's um, uh, David Tennant and Michael Sheen. Have oh, you... I'm so glad yeah, you put it on the slide. I did think about it, the lockdown thing. Yeah, lockdown comedy. That's that's why I wanted to do it kind of now as well, because I'm thinking, well, I'm hoping, we're all hoping, aren't we, 
that you know <laughs> will look back on this and laugh. Uh, not not very heartily. I'm, I'm no, sad a bit, to say. A bit hollowly. If yeah, but um, uh, isn't that the one works with Philip Schofield? Willie Hollow Louis. Um, <laughs> Will, but, Willowy Hollowby, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of thinking, you know, hopefully um, uh, they won't be making lockdown comedies because it's it's not going to be a thing. Mm. Uh, so let's get it done and see if we can we can make that make that happen. But yeah, David Tennant and Michael Sheen. Um, it's called Staged. I thought we'll go for episode one. Um, they, they're due to put the two of them are due to put on a play in the West End, um, and the whole thing's been put on hold by the the, uh, the pandemic. Um, and it's basically um, that that's the story, isn't it? So, um, mm, but yeah, they're on Skype, at, aren't they? Or yeah. equivalent? Yeah. Uh, so mm. we're looking at episode one of Staged. Uh, David Tennant and Michael Sheen, both fine actors, of course, both highly watchable. So it'd be interesting to see. Uh, how that pans out. That's for next week, episode 111. 111? Yeah, of, our, of, the, of the Comedy Slab podcast. Oh, right. Sorry. Try keep um, it, dear. <laughs> With the em- emphasis on try. <laughs> Is it time for me milk to drink it? <laughs> <laughs> it's time for my bed. My, my sister Dolly has got a nice cake for me. A cup of tea. <laughs> Um, uh, right, uh, anti-social media. We are. Oh, I just saw. That. Did you see that advert on? It was one of the two fabulous comedy websites, either Chortle.co.uk or Comedy.co.uk. The, the hashtag is social is over. Social is dead. Social is anyway. It's people people uh, taking up arms against uh, the big guys of Twitter and Facebook and because it's all got so bitter and tribal and uh, bleh, and uh, what they're doing is quite cute. I had to click on it. It's only at the research stage, but they're writing letters to each other and, and the tone is polite, I'm getting the sense. I don't know how oh, that's like going to that. work online, but whether there's a photo of someone's handwritten letter, but you can't knock them for trying, can you? Did you ever did you ever read the letters of Henry Root? I know of them, but I didn't read them. No. Oh, that was so funny. That was an eighties thing, wasn't it? And he and mm. he always used to he always used to put a pound in his letter, and he'd he'd write to Margaret Thatcher and he'd go, and I enclose a pound brackets for yourself, of course. <laughs> and this- <laughs> do we know who wrote them? Was I, there a famous person. I can't them? remember. I'm not sure it was a famous person, but a, a literary person. They were very mm. cleverly done. Very, but yeah, I mean, it's it's what goes around comes around, isn't it? Letters are, are uh, maybe that is. I mean, Twitter is just it's unbearable, isn't it? At times now, it's, it's well, just I just quite, avoid. I avoid the nasty bits. It's just as you wouldn't drive into a, a cesspit in town unless you were that way inclined. Mm. Just go around it. Anyway, look, right. um, we're up against the clock, so I'm going to quickly uh, encourage you, having said all I said about social, we're going to encourage you to um, sign up to Twitter if you're not already there. Certainly follow us at Comedy Slab, and it's also at Comedy Slab, the handle for our Facebook page, if you could like that, as well as following us on Twitter. Personal recommendation, always uh, gratefully received and much more powerful than an impersonal recommendation and lastly a good juicy five-star rating on itunes stroke apple podcasts uh, would be uh, fabulously well received thank you in advance and don't forget if you've liked it have you liked it have you well don't forget you can go and get it on spotify apple podcasts <laughs> you can also you can also get it on spreaker stitcher and iheart radio oh it's cracking isn't it oh <sighs> Oh, we've done this edit then. (laughs) I don't know why I did it like that. I have no idea at all. Uh, So thanks very much for being with us. And if you've enjoyed it, then please be with us next time. It'll be even better, we promise. Don't know why I promised that either, because it won't be, will it? Uh, And uh, from me, I'm off to see the cock woman. (laughs) (laughs) Give my love to your wife. And um, (laughs) incidentally... And uh, I have no idea of how to follow that except to say I'm going to wriggle like a Wrigglesworth off the line that you've hook, line and sinker sunk me into. (laughs) 